futures, swaps, futures and forwards, swaps, value investing. Value investing is another topic. Okay? Is that right? You'll take futures and forwards. Okay, fine. So that's another topic gone. The rest of you just play around with these topics. And if I think of some other topic, I'll, I'll come to you later. Uh, I'll tell you again. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to just quickly give you a, uh, your readings. You'll see in your notes, there's a reference to readings of chapter 11. Very few, four or five pages. Okay. I've changed the page numbers to fit the 10th edition. Okay. So uh, please make sure you do the readings. Okay. From time to time, when I insert readings into your notes, you're supposed to do the reading as well. If I give you a link, like I gave you a link to this matter, that particular on the option Greeks, you're supposed to do those links, uh, readings, not just read whatever's in the uh, in the uh, class notes. Okay, shortcut shortcuts will not be useful. Okay, so let's quickly go to this is the problem. This is why I wanted to have that um, that portable mic system. This is just seven days. We don't have seven days. Let's take this. All right. So let's go back to your page here. Okay. All right. Today is 10:10. So I've given you a heads up on the readings. You make sure you do the readings, which are there in your notes. Okay. So we're going to quickly recap the decision problems and option trading. Okay, just to summarize everything. All right. So these are all familiar to you. We will just quickly run through them, but just be familiar. Uh, always in your mind, run through all the decision problems so that you have a clear identification that these are the decision problems. Okay, because normally you don't have a decision problem focus in uh, in in, a, in the standard textbooks or in the normal approach to studying the subject. So we have a decision problem oriented approach. So make sure you always understand asset class classes, markets and instruments that's already solved by the investor mandate, all this stuff and underlying market, exercise style as Saroni pointed out that's also a decision but normally gets solved by the investor mandate because I have forced you to trade US equity options so there is usually a convention okay so if I it's like if I tell you to drive and you happen to be in the US then which side of the road to drive on right. you can't make that decision because it's already decided by convention so if you're driving in India which side of the road again decided by convention you can't decide it so I forced you to trade US equity options which means they're American style okay the individual equity options and whatever you're trading you're trading options on individual equities and on ETFs all of which are American style okay index options are uh, there's one very popular index option contract which is European style so there also is all decided okay now here are the major decisions which we have to make whether to buy or sell options and then again please understand don't make this uh, thing <laughs> whether to buy or sell options then the answer will be <laughs> don't just no no it's not call or put what is the question whether to buy or sell up when you're trading an option because your instrument is options your instrument is options okay you've got a particular set of underlying markets which is the underlying markets given to you okay let's go back to we can open it here in your let's open your calc file so in your calc file you see the list of markets so you have to go through all the markets individually and uh, so those of you who will be doing futures and forwards like you're doing futures and forwards right so you have to understand all this stuff like pricing of uh, forward contracts and as an example FX forward contracts you have to read up on that I'll give you the text you have to read it so the objective is to uh, develop like in-depth product knowledge you should know the product inside out all right so um, option strategy there's a list of options here so you have a list of option markets okay which you know some of which you can see here so you have options on all this stuff like Microsoft Oracle Procter & Gamble FX uh, Ford Motor and so on and so forth and these are right these are this this is already post pasted into your notes I think so anyway I'll paste it into your notes this is okay yeah this is actually I'm reading from your notes all right okay so how do we decide this with respect to options on Microsoft so I'm splitting the decision problem now I'm talking about two different decision problems we've already done this right 
So when I come to Microsoft option, when I'm taking, let's say we take Microsoft as the first market to trade, uh, we'll go through all the markets in, in turn, okay? That's what you'll have to do when you are running the project. Okay, so uh, when I come to Microsoft options, so when I look at the first decision, whether to buy or sell the options, so how is that solved with reference to what? Is my question clear? When you're trading options of Microsoft, okay, we can come to call and put that we'll come to later. But the first question, if I choose to ask, you can decide which to, which to ask. I'm just happening to ask the, I just happen to ask the options question first. Should I be a buyer of options or should I be a seller of options? How do we solve that problem? What is the method that we follow? Is my question clear? I have to trade Microsoft options, okay? Yes? Taking a view on what? No, why underline? Why underline? When I'm talking about, when I'm talking about, one sec. When I'm talking about whether to buy, my first question is whether I've not come to the question of calls and puts. I'm asking a general question. I'm trading, I'm doing a project where I have to trade options on individual equities and ETFs. So one of them, uh, I take each of these uh, tickers one by one and I go through the same set of decision problems. So I've picked up Microsoft first. So Microsoft options. Should I be a buyer of options or seller of options? How do I solve that? View on the market side, if it will go up. View on which market? Uh, so the underlying set market side, so you think that it will Anybody else, any difference? He's saying view on the, yes? It depends whether the market is bearish or bullish on the election. No, which market? In the case of options, we have a couple of things to look at. It's not simple. Yeah, so yeah. No, no, not US equity market. So, see, no, no, the point I'm trying to get at, I think you were saying it, maybe you were not saying it, uh, but you mentioned it underlying as well. Okay. So, whether to buy or sell options, that's decided purely by the eyeball view. What did we say eyeball is? Eyeball is just a index of option prices, right? Didn't we go through this exercise? So we have to, I'm glad that we are going through it again because this basic logic, because we have to fit it into our basic decision framework. Yes. Okay, this part is already in your notes. All these things are already in your notes. I'm just, this is in your notes file, okay? To see where the writing is being done. So this two, two arrows means decided by the, you know, don't say whether to buy or sell options means I evolve you, okay? Don't just mechanically read the notes. This is why you need to watch the video, okay? So basic decision problem, are you following Gulati? So when I'm trading options on Microsoft, okay, I'm asking, I'm choosing to ask this question first. Then I'll ask the question of whether call or put. I'm splitting up the questions. You can always decide to ask call or put first and this one later. I'm just choosing, I'm, I'm just happen to sequence it this way, okay? So is that a legitimate question when I'm trading options on Microsoft? The first question I have is, should I be a buyer of options or should I be a seller of options? Is that a legitimate question? Yes, sir. Okay. So my question is, how is that solved by reference to the eyeball view? So what do I do? I call up the eyeball chart. You guys have to set up the charts yourself. So this is the best we have right now in terms of long-term eyeball data. Okay. I'm not going to fiddle with this because the uh, internet connection here may not work. So what am I going to do? I'm going to pull up this chart. We have a little bit of like two years or something of data, two, two and a half years. So I'm going to take a view on this red line. This red line, which is the eyeball chart. This is basically giving me an index of option prices. It shows me that option prices have been going up and down in this manner. Okay. Here they were going up here. They were coming down, etc. So I need to take a view on which, which, which way this red line is going to go. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. So if I think that this red line is going to shoot up now to 40%, this 0.4 and all this means 40%. Okay. This means you can see how much balls move. Okay. You can this see this here, it went up to 60%. Okay. Which means basically the wall input here, the eyeball input to equate it to the market price, the eyeball input here would have had to be 60% in order to get this output equal to the market price. Remember? So the eyeballs went up to 60%. So you see how this stuff moves. So you have to now take a call on this, right? So just because, just like if I put you on the river as a boatman and you've never been on that river and you have to navigate the boat, you have, what do you have to do? You have to basically take a call on how the currents are coming and all that, right? So you just have to use your instinct and take a call. Here you can't even do much fundamental analysis because you don't have access to the information. So this, this view taking is pretty much purely technical. 
you have to look at this chart and take a view on which way this you think this is going is this clear okay so if my view is that this is going to shoot up to 40 percent or so okay then what will i be doing i'll be a will i be a buyer of options or seller of options i'll be a buyer of options okay because we know that when the eyeball goes up generally prices of options all options will rise yes okay so this is how you solve the basic decision process you need to structure it clearly in your head okay so that you have a clear cut framework for trading options first you take a view on the eyeball okay you can take it the other way also if you can take a view on the call put first but we are just putting it this way we just happen to sequence it first you take a view on the eyeball and that tells you which whether you want to be a buyer of options or a seller of options is this clear okay this should be clear to everybody so i'm just writing it this way so please don't uh, for shortcut as a shortcut so this is based on how is this derived this is derived from eyeball view okay so please don't say that whether to buy or sell options means eyeball view okay don't mechanically recite this okay you have to understand what is being discussed okay this is clear this is these are major decisions we have to make we already discussed all this stuff type of option to buy or sell call or put okay how do we decide this now i've decided let's say my view is uh, bullish on microsoft okay let's say my microsoft view is bullish on the eyeball sorry on the eyeball of microsoft options my view is bullish so it's going to shoot up to 40 50 percent or so okay for the for my trading horizon so that tells me clearly that i want to be a buyer of options yes then i still have a decision problems should i be a buyer of call options or put options right that still remains to be solved okay so now how do i so that's why i've listed this whether to type of option to buy or sell okay in this case i've decided to be a buyer then whether i should buy a call or buy a put how how do we decide that what is the process by which we decide that underlying what the underlying asset what no you are not in the selling box because I'm in this so when we go to each decision problem we assume that the previous one has been solved to help us to you know uh, concretize the solution to the next to the current one okay so we make an assumption that we have solved the previous problem in a particular way so in this pay, in this case i have locked you into this uh, decision that on the previous question of buy or sell options i took a bullish view on the eyeball so i have now become a buyer of options but i'm still not clear whether i want to buy a call option or a put option buy call. right in this case your what you're saying is correct that basically but you haven't worded it properly so you take a view on the underlying asset the correct answer to this question is what is the process by you which you solve this second problem whether to be a buyer or seller of in this case a buyer of call options or put options is you have to go and take a view on the underlying asset is this clear okay so now you look at the microsoft chart okay so i'm just going to make it simple i'm not going to pull up long term charts and all that okay so you take a view on the microsoft chart and decide whether you want to be a uh, what where do you think the underlying asset price is going okay so this let's say here also i take a view that the underlying asset price is going up the underlying asset scale is on the left hand side okay so this is one just under 140 so let's say my view is for the trading horizon this is going to about 150 155 okay so i have a bullish view on microsoft okay on the underlying asset on the common stock so in this case what will i be buying because i'm going to be buying anyway should i buy a call or a put call. i should buy a call is this clear so you solve the problems now okay we're just recapping we've done all this stuff we're actually just repeating everything but this is based on the so therefore we say that this is based on the underlying asset view okay is everyone following okay how do we go through step by step being aware of all the decision problems and how we so how do we solve them okay yeah so i have a question sir that uh, we should not look first that we should put uh, call or put but uh, afterwards we should we should look that by we should buy ourselves or not yeah you can do that i mean what what if i if i understand you correctly what you're saying is uh, my decision problem three and four you would write to flip them around to make the four go first yes yeah you can always do that i've just chosen to do it this way because i was coming through the standard decision uh, list of decision problems when we looked at underlying assets okay so whether to buy or to sell so i thought easily translatable into options buying or selling options so that's why i put it so it's not a big deal you can split, you can always put it uh, you can do the buy or call or put decision first and then do the uh, the buying or selling of options decision second that's not a, that's not a 
big deal. Okay, you can flip it around if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that in uh, not in the uh, the simulation, the projective view, but in real life, if we uh, if we have water call, uh, so we can sell the call. Uh, if we, uh, that means that if we not sell the call, but we buy the port. No, 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 one minute. Now I'm confused. First, have you bought a call? Yes, sir. I have bought a call. Okay. Sir, but the uh, but one minute. Please be quiet. When he is asking, case, you case, already bought a call. Yeah. Yes, sir. But in the case, uh, in this case, if the uh, we uh, we should sell the call. We should buy your. Uh, no, no, I'm not. First, you have bought a call. Yes, sir. Okay, so that means you have. Let's say, take this example of Microsoft. Your view on the eyeball is bullish. Yes, sir. And the view on the underlying asset price is also bullish. Yes, sir. So you bought a Microsoft call. Yes, sir. Now what happens? So uh, now the uh, price, uh, the share prices rises. Okay. Sir, uh, so but I don't want to uh, sell uh, sell my call option. Okay. But. Uh, I also want to protect it, so I can buy uh, buy a put option. Okay. You can do that. You can do that. You can always buy a put option. Okay, so you can look at there. You have to get into considerations of pro. You can always do that. You can buy a put option. Okay, you have one option is basically to, if you feel the upside potential is uh, is uh, upside potential is kind of exhausted. You can sell the call option, or if you don't want, if you feel there is still upside potential, you can uh, buy a put option. But remember that in the case of options, we don't have so much of a concern with protecting risk because what is the maximum risk in the case of an option? Right? So if I have bought, let's say, the 54 and a half call for December, November, December, in the case of crude oil, what is the underlying here? The underlying futures contract is the December oil contract, which is at 52.43. So if I have bought the 54 and a half call at 153, what is my maximum risk? 153. Okay. So that's why. So what you're saying is not wrong. You can always buy a put. Okay. But generally, remember that when you buy a put, you'll have to shell out some premium. Okay. So therefore, uh, so there's one element of option trading strategies is whether it's a credit strategy or a debit strategy. So this is one when you study option trading strategies, one of the aspects of every strategy you have to look at is whether this strategy is a credit strategy or a debit strategy. Credit strategy means was what does it involve? Selling options or buying options? Anybody wants to guess? Selling, Selling right? So what she is answering is correct because if it's a credit strategy means you get money into your account, the money is credited into your account. So if money is credited into your account, that means you have been selling options, you are collecting premiums like an insurance company. Okay. So we can put this one since we have discussed this point, we can put it in here in your notes as additional as another point that we discussed that. Option trading strategies. So, option trading strategies, credit strategies will involve let's put it down below. Credit strategies imply option selling. Okay. Or it could basically mean uh, more options sold than bought. You could have bought some options, but you have sold more expensive options. So it's still a, uh, a net credit strategy. Okay. So, but get this idea basically that when you discuss option strategies, one of the things we look at is whether this is a credit net credit strategy or a net debit strategy. Okay. So um, we can write net also just to net credit strategy and net debit strategy. This is another aspect that we look at in the case of option strategies. I probably will not have um, that much uh, time to cover all these uh, strategies and option strategies in great detail. So this obviously involves option buying. Okay. So actually, strictly speaking, what this should be is uh, relatively uh, I mean, buying more uh, your total intake of option premium is greater than total outflow on option premium. OK, and this is uh, so this I'm not going to write this uh, and here net debit means total outgo on option premium is more than total inflow on uh, on option premium. If you're doing strategies like what he's suggesting, buy one port, sell, uh, buy a call, then buy another port. In this case, your becomes a totally debit strategy because in both cases, you're buying options.
okay so the, these are more details of option trading strategies which we will probably not have time because after covering basics i'll have to move on to other products like futures forward swaps okay so uh, this stuff you do on your own Sir? Yeah. Like he mentioned that first he got some call and then he's uh, getting up with that market. Market is still increasing. Then he's uh, trying to purchase some put to safeguard, uh, safeguard his call. So in that scenario, how is he uh, analyze the risk involved on the view on his view that and the market can also go down? See, in this case, when when uh, if you are buying a put, okay, that means he must have taken a view that. The eyeball would continue to increase, but the underlying might fall. That is the only reason why you would buy a put. Because buying a put has two parts. One is buying and the second is put. Okay. So if you are buying options means your view on eyeball must be bullish. Okay. So now you have you bought a put. That means your view on the underlying asset is bullish or bearish? Bearish. Okay. So therefore his when he's buying a put, that means that his view is like this, his view combination is like this, that his view on eyeball is that it will continue to increase, okay, and then the view on the uh, underlying asset is that it is bearish, that's why he's buying a put, okay, but as I said, normally people don't do this kind of thing because on put options, your, uh, your uh, downside is well protected, okay, normally when people buy puts, they are usually trying to protect a uh, long underlying asset position, like you did not trade options initially you just bought the stock of microsoft you just bought the common stock of microsoft so this is typically what you would do if you are trading equities and uh, if you're trading into an earnings uh, uh, into an earnings event okay because in earnings events there's a huge risk remember we showed you that this remember this chart which we discussed if we look at now we'll not see it here If we look at yeah this is an earnings event actually this is an earnings drop on Facebook okay so if you were long Facebook stock at this point can you imagine how much money you've lost just through earnings you can't and you don't even have a chance to move you don't have a chance to execute a stock because this uh, market closes at this point then after the market closed, they come out with earnings or before the market opens the next morning, they come out with earnings and then the market opens the next day over here. So you don't have a chance to do anything. You, you can't even cut your losses. Okay. So typically what you would, what you should do as a prudent risk management strategy. So coming, uh, developing on the, the risk aspect that uh, Garbit had focused on and which you have also highlighted that typically that strategy of buying puts would be em uh, employed more by people who are long who did not buy options to start with but they bought let's say the stock of Facebook they were long the stock of Facebook but they wanted to buy some because you know that around earnings releases there's a tremendous amount of risk because stock prices move around quite a lot and this is not some mom and pop stock with low volume it's a very actively traded stock okay high market cap actively traded but even these stocks move when it comes to earnings you'll see these massive moves in earning uh, in stocks okay so even liquid stocks you'll have these massive moves so one of the things you will do is if you're long facebook stock you don't really want to sell your stock because you still feel that facebook has a lot of upside potential you don't want to sell your stock but you want to buy some insurance around the earnings date so typically what you would do here is you would buy a very short dated facebook put option because you just want to be able to get around the earnings risk okay so then you would buy a maybe close to add the money or depending on how much protection you want to buy because the more protection you buy the more expensive it will be okay and so that trade-off will always be there so are you following now what i'm saying yes you're following yes sir. okay so the point that you raised is correct is a, is a valid point that you want to always protect your risk as the market keeps moving okay but typically when you have a long option position to start with your risk is already protected because your risk is already capped at that 153 that i paid for that oil crude oil option okay the premium is the maximum amount you can lose all right so therefore you don't worry so much about protecting long option positions the risk but really where you have big risk is on unprotected long positions in the underlying assets or short positions it can go either way right so uh, so therefore if you, at a point like this going into earnings you would typically buy a very short dated put option 
to cover the risk of earn, uh, earnings. Okay, so if you bought an at the money put option and then the market goes and opens here, okay, so then you can exercise that put and uh, you know cover your uh, mitigate your losses, right? So obviously, you'll have to pay a premium also, and so that the net uh, saving is uh, you have to adjust it with the premium outgo. Is everyone following so far? Okay, so this applies to short positions also because you can get massive moves. You remember once uh, in Tesla, Elon Musk tweeted about a takeover that Tesla was going to go private. You remember that? He had tweeted, funding secured, the famous tweet. Actually, he was disciplined by the SEC for that. I personally think they should have put him in jail because that was clearly a market manipulation. He put in a tweet and there was no funding secured actually, so he lied. So he put out a tweet and those guys who were short Tesla stock, they got burnt. It was somewhere around here, I think. So those poor fellows who were short Tesla, they got burnt because the market shot up after that tweet. It was, uh, I think it was somewhere here. Uh, I think it was either here or here. This point when the market shot up, this this happened. So this guy tweeted saying about funding secured and he's going to take Tesla private. You know what a going private transaction is? Going private means you buy out all the shares, all the publicly traded shares. You buy all the publicly traded shares. So if there's such a big demand shock, what will happen to the stock price? It's like a buyback. Okay, so you're buying back all the stock. Okay, so which means the price will tend to get pushed up. So all those poor fellows who are short Tesla stock, they all got burnt and they actually sued him. There's a civil suit also uh, on this. I don't know what happened to the civil suit, but the SEC didn't punish him enough. Okay, so the point is that you have this kind of whenever you're long or short, especially in the case of equities, which uh, have all these kinds of uh, uh, freaky movements. So you have this problem. So you would protect that uh, the underlying asset positions long or short that you would protect around key events uh, with by using options, long option positions. Okay, is everyone clear? Okay. So we go back to our old set of decision problems which we are covering. Okay, so this is why I tell you guys to keep on following market. Like obviously, many of you are not aware of all this. Stuff. So this is why I keep telling you to follow markets. You must be totally embedded in markets. All the time, you should be following all the stuff that's going on in the market. And that's what a finance student should be doing. Okay, so you should know exactly what is going on. All, and this is how your experience builds up. Okay, and then, then new things happen, you can connect it. You can connect it to things that happened before, okay, and you can learn a lot. So you can get a securities law angle on this also because there's market manipulation. Because all these things, when you go and operate in the real world, you're not operating in a vacuum. There's everything that is involved, okay. So securities laws angles are involved, okay. All these other kinds of regulatory aspects, okay. So everything, so if this is why you should be following markets and you should be aware of all the things that have happened in the markets. That's how your experience builds, okay right where we are where are we so we know these these things which we have already chosen which expiry date to choose this also we solve by we can have how do we choose which expiry date this is how do we decide this problem how do we solve this problem do you remember we discussed this problem that there's a problem of which expiry date yeah yes Parul. how do we is my question clear we still have a problem when I'm looking at these set of options. So I look, this look, so many different types of options in the case of crude oil. Okay, which strike should I choose? I can't actually. The moment I release it, I don't know for some reason it seems to just maybe I should go this way. Whatever, I'll just, I'll just hold it there. Okay, just to get let you see all these different options on crude oil. Which one should I choose? Okay. So what is the rule that we evolved and what is it based on? Which important option sensitivity is it based on? I showed a graph. Yeah, so what is it based on? Theta. So the decision is basically based on theta. Okay, so which expiry to choose? It is here. I'm just going to write theta. So again, don't say expiry to base. What, what is expiry date? Then just say theta. So this is based on theta. Okay, and theta we know this is not you don't have to take a view over here. Okay, so essentially this is basically theta and theta versus and actually we can put this as what is the relationship that we make use of theta uh, as a function of now I don't want to make it so long. Um, 
I'm going to remove this. English can be bad. Theta as function of Yes, you remember this? The chart that Paul is referring to? What is the ex what is the relationship that we take? So the first thing, the point is that when it comes to the decision on the expiration date, which expiry to choose? So many different expiration dates. How do we decide that? We look at, we basically focus on theta as one of the, the particular option sensitivity that we focus on. Remember all these option sensitivities? You guys have to do lots of reading, okay? So that all this stuff is embedded in your brain. Otherwise, if you just come to class, and look at the note uh, look at the screen from time to time in between your whatsapp then this will not go into your head okay so uh, important one of the important sensitivities is theta so this is what we exploit to solve this problem of which expired date to choose and the particular relationship that we exploit is theta as a function of time to expiration right so we know one thing that we know is this is not does not require us to take a view we know that longer dated options have lower theta and shorter dated options have very high theta okay and so the other thing that you have to exploit is basically two things we have to exploit here we, we exploit two things here what is let's go back to that uh, chart that uh, Paul was referring to this okay so so to solve the question, so the decision problem that we are solving is which expiration, whether I'm a buyer of options or a seller of options, that those decisions have already been taken. Now I have a further decision problem to take, which is which expiration should I be trading, having decided all this buy sell business. Okay, uh, which expiration? That for that we turn to theta, and we turn to this established relationship between theta and the time to expiration. So we know that longer dated options have very high uh, have. Uh, lower theta okay and uh, shorter dated options have very high theta this is clear yes. that's one thing that we have to exploit one relationship this is a rule there is no view taking required here okay the second thing we also need to know which is also a rule which is not does not require any view taking which is what do we see these are for long the sensitivities are for long option positions so what do we notice the theta of long options is Yes. Small. No, not small. Negative. 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 Okay. What do we notice? The theta of both puts and calls, because these are these sensitivities are given for long option positions. So the, when we turn to theta and we use theta and its relationship to the expiration date, we use these principles to solve that. What decision problem are we solving? Which expiration date to trade in? Right. For that we use, please be aware of all this stuff. Don't just blindly do it. Be aware of all the processes in your brain. That this is the logical step. You should work your brain like a computer. Okay, a computer will always work logically like that. Okay, human beings, because we are so smart, we tend to just jump through. We don't even realize that we are actually solving a decision problem. But we have already solved it. Okay, so we, but in this case, what you have to do is you have to be aware that this is the decision problem we are solving. And these are the rules that we are using or principles that we are using to solve the decision problem. Only then will you learn the theory properly. Okay, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Arora, are you following? Yes. Okay, so first decision rule that the first principle that we use is again does not require view taking is that theta is higher for uh, theta is higher for sh uh, short dated options. Where is the chart? Yeah, short dated options have very high theta and longer dated options have very low theta or relatively low theta. Okay, and the second principle that we are going to use is that when you are looking at these sensitivities or you know this is what I've told you that this when the model throws out these sensitivities along with the option premium that these sensitivities are for long option positions so what you know is that long option positions have negative theta which means short option positions will have positive, positive theta means that means they benefit from theta okay so you take these two principles okay you keep them in your hand and then you decide to solve then you just then you apply these principles to solve the problem of which expiration to trade in okay so which means if i am a buyer of options sg1 if i'm a buyer of options should i choose a longer dated exp option or a shorter dated option don't one minute let him answer is my question clear yes sir. not clear 
You know which decision problem we are trying to solve? No, no. Now I'm asking you, which decision problem are we trying to solve? What are we discussing? Which decision problem are we trying to solve? Don't answer anything. Let him answer. Arora, which decision problem are we now discussing? Whether to eat pizza for lunch or masala dosa? What? Which decision problem are we solving now? Expiry date. Which expiry date to choose? Okay. So coming back to the question of now, second question you want to answer? SG1. Yes. So if I am a buyer of options, should I choose longer dated expiry or shorter dated expiry? Longer dated. Longer dated. Why? You have to answer in two steps using the two principles that we have listed as the principles to be used to solve this decision problem. No, Arora? You agree with this view? If I am a buyer of options, should I buy longer dated options or shorter dated options? Longer dated. Why? Most theta is negative. It is what? Theta is negative. Theta is negative for what? Short option positions. Long options. And? Your answer is not logically complete. You have to assume that I am a computer. If you are talking to a computer, the computer is not going to be satisfied with the answer. You have to complete your logic. What is the logic? Your first part is okay. That theta is negative for long option positions and I am buying options. So what is the next part? Short and positive. Not working. Okay. Gulati, can you finish the answer? Is my question clear? What is the second part of his answer which he was not able to give? Sir, so that uh, for a uh, longer term, for term option, theta is negative and for the shorter term is positive. That he has already answered. What is the second part? Anybody? Uh, maybe my question is not clear. He was saying that the value of is decreasing at the one rate. Yeah, so you are hinting at the second part of the answer which should be that therefore first of all that op long option position will have negative theta. So if my decision choice is between should I, given that I am a buyer of options, should I go for a longer dated expiry or shorter dated expiry? But when I look at this chart, I see that when I look at this chart here, if we do it here, then when I see, I can see that, okay, both are, I can't escape the fact that if I'm long options, I will have negative theta. But at least if I go for a longer dated option, my theta is less negative than a shorter dated option where the th theta is very severely negative. It's like I'm choosing between two money losing uh, investments. One is losing $10 and one is losing $600. So I will choose the one that I that is losing $10. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Are you following now, Aurora? What was the logic you should have mentioned? So, so understand, teach yourself to think logically. So this will improve your quality of thinking. So that the answer, you don't just give an answer, but you also logically give the answer as if you were a computer. Are you following computer man? Kulati? Yes, sir. You are following computer logic yes. that if I am long options, I will have negative theta. So whenever I go, I will have negative theta. So that is the first principle that long options have negative theta, short options have positive theta. The second principle is that longer dated option, the theta is less negative than the theta for shorter dated options. Is this clear? Are you following the logic? Hmm? Okay. What happens? Is anyone? No. Okay. 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 One minute. Maybe by making you think through the logic, I'm making it more complicated. Yes. Rather than just giving you a rule. Yes. Just by this. No. 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 That's not acceptable. You have to understand the logic. You have to understand how the solution flows from the two principles. Okay. Now I have told you. Yes. Sir, so being uh, negative for a longer uh, term option, it, uh, it means that the risk uh, is less for the, some, some other risk. Yeah. No. The, what does C? Also, you have to understand what negative theta means. What does negative theta mean? Negative theta means that, let's say this one. Let's say you bought both the options. Let's say you bought the call option and the put option. What does the negative theta number mean? That means every day the call option will lose 5 cents and the put option will lose 4 cents. Ceteris paribus, okay, if nothing else happens, every day that because days will keep passing, at least time will keep passing, 
What does this mean? This means basically that when you are holding on to long option positions, if nothing else happens, every day the options are, that's why they are called a wasting asset. Options are called a wasting asset, long option positions, because every day the option will lose value. Yes, Kulkin, this is what you were saying, right? Yeah. 5.4 cents? No, no, 5.4 cents. Yeah, I'm just saying 5. You're good, very good. Okay. So, uh, so I'm just rounding it off, basically. Okay. It's just clear to you. Are you following? So this means the value is decreasing at a lower rate for a longer period of time. Yeah. So, the first thing from, from this, that you can't see from this chart. From this display, you can't see that. On this display, all you can see is that the principle that you extract from this display is that knowing that these sensitivities are computed for long options okay you have to teach yourself to think like this otherwise you are not going to grow intellectually as an mba finance student you should be able to give the answer and you should also be able to say what are the principles that lead to this solution not just give the answer you know mug it up and give the answer okay you have to know exactly what is the logic by which this answer is derived at okay are you following yes okay so from this chart you get this idea that long option positions because these sensitivities are for long option positions long option positions have negative theta yes tarun you're following okay so that is the principle you get from here from this chart what is the principle you get you this is also a principle doesn't require any view taking okay this is a fact longer dated options have less yeah long positions have negative theta but compared to shorter dated options let's put it this way compared to shorter dated options shorter long is subjective of course but i think you know like seven days is short and you know like 75 days is longer compare those two then you know which is short which is long okay so the principle you get from this chart is that this is also a fact that longer dated options the theta is less negative than the theta for absolute value of the theta now let's talk about absolute value of the theta is less for longer dated options than it is for shorter dated options is this clear are you following what does this mean it means that the rate of loss of value okay let's go back to this if you go here the rate of loss of value here, Gulati, try to follow this, okay? What does this chart mean visually? It means it shows you that this, this theta is much higher. Can you see that this chart is dropping? It's going down, okay? It's a negative on the negative side, okay? All right, so the negative side. So, but here, so this is the zero line and it's going down and it's going down at a very sharp rate, which means the loss of value per day is very, uh, very uh, dramatic. But here the loss of value per day is not so dramatic. So it's like I, I'm forcing you at gunpoint to buy one of the two investments. You have to buy one of them. And one is losing value at $10 per day and one is losing value at $600 per day. So you will obviously buy the one which is losing value at $10 per day. This is clear. So this is what it means that shorter dated or when you look at shorter dated options, their theta is very, uh, the absolute value of the theta is very, very high. So their loss, the rate of loss of value is very high compared to a short, longer dated option. This is clear. Yes, sir. The rate of loss of value is very high. So therefore, if you are going to be long options because of the principle that long options always have negative theta. So you know that if you are going to be long options, the theta is always going to be working against you. Is this clear? The first point. See, you know from this line, from this display, you know from any option model display that will also give you the Greeks. So you should know that these Greeks are calculated for long option positions. Okay, which means long options have long positive delta, long call options have positive delta, puts have negative delta, gamma, you should have to, that's why you have to do all these readings. So you understand these concepts, positive gamma, vega, etc. All right, but both calls and puts have negative theta. Yes. What does that mean? That means that if you have a long option position, if nothing else happens, every day that passes, that option is going to lose value. Yes, long option positions have negative theta. This is what it means. That's the first principle. Okay, but since you have decided to buy options, that means there's no escaping the negative theta. Okay, whatever option you buy, it will have negative theta because it's a long option positions. So now the question is, obviously, since you know that my investment is going to be losing value every day, I would rather that it lose less value per day than lose more value per day. 
that is common sense yes. right so that is where you that is where this second chart comes in which shows you the relationship that's why i've said here in our uh, in our decision problem that which expiry date to choose to, to solve this decision problem we use theta we use the concept of theta not vega or whatever we use theta and what exactly do we what is the aspect of this theta that we use look at? we look at the relationship between theta and the time to expiry this is clear we exploit that relationship to solve this decision problem are you following yes okay so i've bought, decided to be a buyer of options that means i know the theta will always be against me right i have no choice so then all i want to do is let it be less against me than being more against me let if i'm going to lose value every day let me lose less value per day than lose more value per day obviously that's logical and for that what do i do i look at the relationship between theta and expiration date and i see that when there's a long time to expiration the theta is less compared to when there's a short time to expiration is this clear yes okay so that's why now if i am a buyer of options that's why we come to the answer that i would rather be buying longer dated options than shorter dated options is this clear yes sir. so rather than memorizing do you realize it's better for your brain your brain is getting a uh, little uh, movement Jumping. some movement is happening in your brain right so neural networks are uh, connecting right so you're exercising your brain it is better to know the logic by which the answer is arrived at than just know the answer is this clear bloody is this clear now yes sir yeah sir in the case of modern put put is always having a, a higher negative value as compared to sorry a low negative value as compared to put no 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 that's not uh, necessarily true you're talking about the theta yeah yeah no that's not necessarily true or at this point we don't want to make these kind of uh, assessments we just want to look at basically that both have negative theta if you have a long option position okay let's see one more yeah so so uh, if we'll be selling so that means the theta will be in our, our favor yeah if you have decided to sell if you are going to go short options then the theta will always be in your favor okay in that case so we have not your question is a little ahead of time i want to first make sure the the logic is properly explained in the first case which is where we are a buyer of options we are a buyer of options so we want to be a longer dated we want to be buying longer dated options because we know that for longer dated options the theta is less the absolute value of the theta is less so if every day if i'm going to lose some money i would rather be losing less money than to losing more money so therefore i look at the relationship between theta and expiration date and because i am a buyer of options i choose a longer dated option to buy rather than a shorter dated option is this clear okay so this is clear everybody understand the logic okay so now if you can see here once again all right let's look at uh, so we have 30 days to expiration let's increase this uh, let's make this something like 90 days so look at the theta for the call option just remember that so 0.054 okay so if i'm now going to increase the expiration what should happen to the theta theta should theta should become more i'm going to make i'm going to make the days until expiration from 30 to 90 theta will become more negative less negative let's check it becomes less negative the same thing is here you can see it here you can remember the visual charts are easier to remember but you should remember this both intellectually and uh, and visually that if you plot theta against time to expiration it's always going to be below the zero line because you're plotting this for basically the long i mean, I mean this theta is showing you for a long option position so if you're short then it'll be again it'll just be flipped around this is a profit for you okay so the same thing that you see here that for longer dated options the theta is less and for shorter dated options the theta is higher are you clear parul are you clear about this okay you're sure okay so now when we went from 90 we went from 30 to 90 days the theta became less from second decimal 5 cents it went to second decimal 3 cents because we have now chosen a longer dated option right is this clear bilati are you following so if i'm a buyer of options i would rather buy a 90 day option than a 30 day option right is this clear okay yes arora are you following yeah you got all the steps ashi one yes you got all the steps okay all right so 
uh, this is what we use to solve we go back to our decision problems so this is basic so remember that we are using these two principles okay so maybe um, we should use this we should write this down so that you have a or maybe we should not write this down and make you watch the video yeah so theta is a function of expiry uh, no i'll write it as a option this is option position versus sine of theta this is the first principle let's write it in abstract terms so that you don't gain anything by blindly memorizing it okay posi is means option position short position this is a short form for uh, position okay option position versus sine of theta is it clear what i mean by this what this means is that long option positions have negative theta and short option positions have uh, positive theta okay that means the theta is working in your favor when you are short options yes that is the first principle we can call it one second principle is what is the second principle we discussed that theta versus um, absolute value of theta versus time to is this clear logical how to logically arrive at answers have you understood now khushboo tarun is it clear now okay everybody was getting confused because we were going through the logic but this is what you have to get used to so everything you learn okay every concept that you learn you should be able to explain it to yourself through such logical rules rather than just mechanically mugging it up okay you have to be able to explain it as if you are explaining to a computer that this solution comes out logically through these rules through the application of these rules okay so these rules are this is basically these are have been taken as axioms axioms you remember from mathematics axiom is something which you take as given as true and then you use that uh, axiom to make uh, to come up with a proof okay yeah you as you not really a hypothesis hypothesis are different because hypothesis may end up being false or true the axiom is assumed to be always true so the reasons to prove the theorem or hypothesis is yeah no no axiomatic proof means you assume certain axioms are true that a right angle triangle has whatever so you know by some 90 degree side or whatever and then based on those truths you prove something else okay so these are like axioms that you use okay that theta will always be uh, very high absolute value of theta will be very high for shorter dated options as opposed to longer dated options okay you use that to uh, to solve your decision problem okay so this part is clear now we go back to the decision problems which strike to choose this we have already discussed earlier i am not going to dis repeat it okay it's already been discussed earlier i think uh, by reference to views on the underlying asset price that's one way but the more correct the more theoretically correct way is to take a view on the eyeballs okay and therefore you if you are a seller of options because here you can't see uh, here you can't see the option eyeballs because you can see a little bit okay maybe yeah you can see it this way let's not expand it you can see it here you can see the closing eyeballs here can you see the differences so really what if i am a buyer of options can you see the display here can you see the display here now if i am a buyer of options which one by the eyeball rule which one should i choose yes sukriti if i is my question clear if i am a buyer of options now i have a problem of which strike to choose okay in this case we don't have let's assume these are actually strikes because i have already chosen the expiration date yes okay so uh, i have already chosen the expiration date okay i just want to just uh, pause it here because i just remembered uh, uh, some of the expressions 
Now, those who have done, if you do badly in this exam or some other exam, don't take it as, as some kind of major catastrophe in life that, you know, you have to go on sannyas or something like that. Just, these are all things like, you know, uh, because I'm looking at some of the expressions and I get really worried. So, you, these are exams, okay, maybe you didn't prepare properly, you gave it sloppily, you didn't answer all the questions, you didn't attempt all the questions. So, but then life is much bigger than one exam or one degree or whatever like that. Okay, so don't take, take a look at learning. Don't focus so much on exams. Look at learning. What are you learning? Because learning will give you confidence. Okay, not exam scores don't give you confidence if you haven't learned the subject. So you master the subject, focus on mastering the subject. Life is a very long game. It's not a 100 meter sprint. It's a marathon. Okay. So the sums from spent by setback, your LLB scores are low, uh, you have a second division in LLB, don't worry about all these things, these things don't matter in life, okay? Life is much bigger than all these small uh, things, okay? So I just thought I'll give you this because these days, you know, uh, kids get very hassled when they have bad exam results. These are not, exams are basically a waste of time, yes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So I actually got into a lot of trouble in Ahmedabad because I wrote a proof in one of my papers that exams and quizzes are a waste of time. So I wrote a mathematical proof. So I eventually I was forced to give that exam because again the teacher told me that I'll, if you don't give the exam again, I'll give you an I. Then I obviously I can't go out without a degree, so I had to give the exam. But he never proved he could never prove that my proof was wrong. That, that we'll do later. Okay, coming back, let's assume because I don't have the eyeball displays. One sec. Let's focus on the decision problem. Okay, we need to we need to decide whether which strike to choose. Okay, which strike to choose? Okay, and I've given you two options. One, uh, two ways to do it. One is the uh, slightly cruder method, which is to take a view on the underlying asset and see that this is going to not go below above. Let's say, for instance, the way you do that there is if you're selling a call. Let's say this is fifty-five. Uh, this is around one hundred forty dollars on Microsoft, and you feel Microsoft will not exceed one hundred forty dollars. So you sell a 140 call. The idea is that if Microsoft is never going to go above 140 dollars, then the, buy, the person who buys the 140 call will not want to exercise the call. Are you following the logic? We've done it once before. Okay. So then basically you just pocket the premium because when you sell options, you earn premium, right? Like an insurance company which sells fire insurance, but there isn't a single fire in the country. So they collect all the fire insurance premiums and they don't have any claims. Right, so that's what you want. You don't want the option to be exercised. So you take a view on the underlying asset 140, it won't exceed 140, and then you sell a 140 call. That's one way, that's a slightly cruder way of doing it. The better way of doing it, the more scientific approach to doing it, which is what you should learn, is that let's assume these are not expiration date, that these are actually strike rates. So I'm just asking you to imagine that these are different strike rates. You have already chosen the expiration date. Okay. Now, what is the way? Now you can see the eyeballs over here. So now Sokriti will tell us, assuming these are all expiration dates, this is the at the money and these are out of the money calls and these are out of the money puts. Uh, these are in the money calls here. So if these are the strikes, now which using the eyeball rule, one sec, be clear what is the decision problem we are solving? Which strike to buy? Having decided the expiration date and all other problems, we still have one problem left. Which strike to buy? Now we are talking about two ways to solve it. The second method we are using, which is the better method, more scientific. That is by using the eyewall. Using eyewall as an index of option prices. So if I am a buyer of options, which eyewall in this display, you can see everything. Am I, am I blocking it? You can see this last column. Can you see it? You can't see the last column. So I will move out. Now can you see? Can you see? Yes or no? What? Can you see it or no? No. You still can't see this. Okay. One minute. Now can you see it? Yes. Sir. Okay. Now tell me which which uh, eyeball will you choose if you are a buyer of options? You can see all the last column. Which one will you choose? Yes, Sukriti. Is my question clear? Question. One minute. One minute. Don't answer for her. She will answer. One sec. One sec. Be quiet. 
which one will you choose which is the third one 36.1 okay all right okay so my question was clear that if you are a buyer of options and you imagine that these are not expiration dates because we don't have a live market right now okay these are not expiration dates these are actually uh, if I go to a live market I won't see the eyeballs so uh, I'm assuming that these are not actually expiration dates but these are strike prices these are different strike prices and these are the eyeballs associated with those option prices for those strikes okay because you still have to choose the strike right and you are saying you will choose the 36.1 okay anybody else with a different view no sir uh, one minute Gulati, yes what about that april 20 may 20 we are not having any the i want i will yeah, this is not to be considered because we don't have a value <laughs> so <laughs> not, no no because there's some there must be some system problem there must be some system problem i don't know why there's no eyeball here there may have been some system problem calculation method okay uh, but that you disregard that row disregard that row okay Yes, Aurora, is my question clear? Which one should I choose if I'm a buyer of options? Is everyone clear about my question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We still have to solve. We've decided the expiration date and we are pretending that these are actually uh, strike rates. These are strike rates and these are the eyeballs associated with those strike rates. The mid price of the eyeball, not the bid and offer. We don't see the bid and offer. So now, is my question clear, Aurora? Which eyeball should I choose if I'm a buyer of options? Which one? Third one. You are also agreeing with Sukriti. 36.1. Okay. Anybody else with a different view? Everyone, nobody disagrees. Ritesh, my question is clear. Which eyeball should I be buying? Which which uh, strike rate associated with which eyeball should I be buying? Okay. So which means you actually identify the eyeball first and then you go left and choose the strike. That particular strike. Nobody disagrees? No one? 36.1 what is so special about 36.1 so when I go and try to buy something I should buy the one which is more expensive no no what are we doing here now we are choosing strikes we have decided everything else we've decided to be a buyer of options we've decided to be a buyer of call options based on the underlying asset view we have chosen the expiration date we have chosen a long expiration date because we are a buyer of options we have chosen 90 day options let's say as opposed to 13 day or 7 day options are you following the steps yes we've gone through all these problems we have chosen the buy to be a buyer of options then we chose to be a buyer of call options then we chose a, a expiration date long dated expiry like 90 days because we don't want to have a short dated expiry with high theta high negative theta working against us now we still have one more decision problem which is which strike price having chosen the 90 day options Sir. let's assume that these are all 90 days uh, this is within the 90 day option these are all the strikes are you following my points are you following the statement of the problem yes so let's assume these are 90 day expiry we chose 90 day expiry and these are all the strikes within the 90 day expiry okay imagine that these are strikes these are obviously not strikes imagine these are all like 55 56 57 58 so now my st i still have a problem having chosen to buy 90 day calls which strike price should i choose and i told you that the second rule of solving that problem is a more important more scientific rule which is we solve it by eyeballs okay yes gulati now sir according to me 26.5 yeah correct so that is the right answer in this display because if i am a buyer of what what is the logic Less. if we know here again here again you have to use two principles always try to think as if you are explaining it to a computer always try to adopt this logic because it will help you it will clear your thinking okay what are the two rules here that eyeballs are an index of option prices first rule eyeballs are an index of option prices which means higher eyeball means this option is more expensive lower eyeball means this option is less, less expensive this is the rule first rule yes second rule is again very obvious that's why i said human beings just solve decision problems without realizing the rules that are rules are being applied the second rule is because a computer doesn't know so for a computer you have to tell the computer that if you are buying you should buy the lowest price if you are selling you should sell the high. how will a computer know if you don't tell him computers don't know anything so for a computer you have to even tell him 
when you are buying buy the lowest price when you are buying when you are selling sell the highest price are you following so you have to learn to teach yourself to think like a computer as if you are explaining the instructions to a computer this will help your logical it will make you think more logically okay so the two rules that are being used to solve this decision problem again two principles okay first is that eyeball is an index of option prices so higher eyeball means that option is more expensive lower eyeball means that option is less expensive okay first principle second principle is when i am a buyer i want to buy the cheapest at the cheapest price when i am a seller i want to be selling at the highest price yes. this is very, seems very obvious but we have to state it as a principle yes yes now using these two principles can you see that gulati's answer is correct yes, yes sir. so we should identify the lowest eyeball okay and then we should go left or right to see what is the strike price associated with that lowest eyeball yes we have imagined that these are actually strike prices we are imagining these are strike prices okay so then if this is 56 then we first see that the lowest eyeball is here then we go left along that row and we choose 56 is everyone clear so far yes sir. yes correct you are convinced okay we have asked you to imagine that these are not expiry date because we don't have a life if we were teaching this class at 8 pm uh, in delhi then we would have us markets open i could actually show you live ball prices and all that okay but that you will see on your own right okay yes so does that mean that if we are on the ball side we will select a higher uh, higher theta uh, because uh, we want to sell So the higher eyeball will be selected. No, 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 no. Your question is sounding very confusing. What do you mean you are on the call side? No, no. No, no. You are not on the put side or the call side. Either you are a buyer of options or you are a seller of options, and then you are either a buyer or seller of call options or put options. Now tell me, what are you? Are you a buyer of call options or you are seller of put options or what are you? First, set the context. Then we can answer your question. Are you saying? I am on the call side. I am on the put side. It doesn't make any sense. You have to talk in terms of positions and option types. You know there are two types of options: calls and puts. And how many types of positions? Long and short. So whenever you are talking about some situation, like Garvid was saying, he had bought some call options, then he wanted to buy a put option. That is that makes sense because I can understand what is his position and what type of options. So what situation are you talking about? Have you gone long call or call options, or have you gone long put options? Yes. What happened? <laughs> no, no. Okay, now tell me. Try. Okay, now let's try and understand your question once again. Okay, guys, please be quiet. Let's try and understand what her problem is. Uh, no, 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 no. There's nothing to do with put side. The put side is only being shown because Sukriti could not see, so I brought it like this. Because in this display, uh, in this display, they are showing the eyeballs, the average eyeballs. Okay, forget about put side and call side. The average. Yeah, yeah. This is the average of all. These are the closing. See, remember, this is now. We have not expanded the expiries. Okay, and we are not able to see for some reason. They are not showing the. uh the but this actually should be trading i don't know why they are not showing uh, the uh, maybe it will take a little time to load okay for some reason they are not showing the the eyeballs when you mouse over okay so maybe these options markets don't trade in uh, on globex so we we'll, we'll have to see why this is happening or maybe it's just taking a little time so you forget about that as on the put side these are you take this as the average eyeball this is the average eyeball for this expiry are you following this is not put side or anything so did you follow the rules do you understood the problem what is the problem we were trying to solve the problem we were trying to solve is here which strike to choose and here we assume that all the previous problems have been solved and we assume some type of solution that between long and short we have chosen long between call and put we have chosen call okay to solve one decision problem we make some assumptions about how we have solved the previous problems okay 
Is this clear? Are you following? So right now I have a problem. I chose to buy call. I chose to be a buyer of options. I chose to be a buyer of call options. I chose a 90 day expiry because I'm going to be long option. So I don't want to choose a short dated option because if I have a short dated option, I will be hit by massively negative theta. If I buy a seven day or a 14 day option. Okay. I don't want to be hit by this kind of theta. I would rather go long and take 90 days, 180 days, those kind of options where the theta is much less. So every day the hit I'm taking from the theta is much less. Okay. So I choose, I solved all those problems, but I still have to decide which strike to choose. If you choose any expiry, you still have a problem of this. Which strike should I choose? 54, 53, 53 hour, 54, 54 hour, which one should I choose? Okay, so here we are not getting for some reason we are not getting the eyeball uh, mouse over when we mouse over we are not getting the eyeball figures. Ideally you would get that for US equity options in US US time. Okay, then you will see this but in the in the absence of that we wanted to just show you the eyeball uh, figures and we wanted to pretend that this are these are actually the strike prices for 90 days. For 90 day expiry, having frozen it at 90 day expiry, we wanted to pretend that these are actually strike prices. And these are the average eyeballs for the different strike prices. Is this clear? Yes. Is your question getting, I mean, are you getting more clarity now? Yes. Okay. So that's where Gulati gave us the right answer that we should be buying the call, the strike price associated with this eyeball because he scanned all the eyeballs. And he found that this is the lowest eyeball. So he has used two principles that uh, lower eyeball means cheaper option. Higher eyeball means more expensive option. The second principle he has used is that when I'm a buyer, I want to buy the cheapest price. And when I'm a seller, I want to sell at the highest price, right? Using these two principles, he has come up with a solution that I should choose the strike associated with this lowest eyeball since I'm a buyer for this expiration and then we go here we go along to the row and we see what is the strike associated with this eyeball is this clear yes Tarun, you are convinced okay so everyone is clear now how we have solved it. we are actually just repeating the stuff that we taught in the previous class so it's not like we are having these videos are not like instructional videos where you have one topic and you move on to the next because i when i need when these are live classes so when i look at people's faces and i see they are looking lost so obviously i can't move on to the next topic so i have to teach it again right so that's why we are covering pretty much the same topic in subsequent classes also but please make sure you do your readings do your book readings you have to master all these concepts if you go for an interview or an option for whatever you know somewhere you go for an interview smc or whatever for trading interview or something like that for a trading position or even a sales position you should understand financial products you have a finance mba you should understand financial products inside out which means options greeks all kinds of option strategies, eyeballs, movements, historic historical volatility, everything should be like that. It should just be coming out like that. And instead, of, uh, well, uh, everybody looking lost. You know? uh, so it should be much more, uh, and that only comes when you do enough practice on your own. Okay. So okay, now we still have one more decision to make. Okay, where are we? We have one minute. We have one second. One minute. One minute. Yeah. No, that is a separate problem. We are still actually just coming at this family of problems. This price entry price, we have already done this. This is going to be done the same way. You are already familiar from your NSE project when you are trading only in underlying assets. Okay, spot equities. This we have already solved entry price equal to greater than whatever market price. What kind of orders you use that we have already decided. You take a view on the underlying asset and the eyeball and you decide whether the option is going to fall in value or, the, or rise in value. If I am going to be buying options. Okay, once again, let me just uh, take say, say 36 days. Okay, I'm looking at all these options. Let's say I'm looking to buy puts. I will basically take a call on this right now. The puts are around 350. So I take a view on the underlying and the eyeball and I decide whether the puts are likely to fall in value or rise in value. If I think they'll fall in value, then I'll place a limit order for this put. Now the same logic you are applying to the underlying asset. Now you have to apply to the option. But you should be able to apply that same logic. You just take that logic and apply it here. Okay, you should be clear about that. Okay, so that problem is solved. The second, pro the the problem that we have not exercised is uh, decided is this one which Tanya brought up. Okay, indirectly, that early exercise basically what we are going to do is 
after you buy the option initially after you buy this that's why i said after initial transaction after initial transaction you have these other problems should i do early exercise or should i that's why you see 9.1 and 9.2 the basic choice is between 9.1 and 9.2 and then in 9.2 you have two other decision problems okay yes. plan to exit at loss if you buy the option and the option keeps on losing value you can always sell it off in the market you don't have to hold it to expiry okay you can always sell it off in the option uh, in the market so you can trade the option just like an underlying asset you take views on whether the option price will go up or loss or, or down and then if you feel the option is losing money then you can sell off the option and even when the option is making money you can sell off the option so what we are doing is basically for the purposes of this project we assume that no early exercise okay there is actually some material on early exercise it has connections to dividend paying and all that we are not going to uh, complicate uh, i'm just going to write it as for now no that for now means that it's meant to tell you that <coughs> this is not an absolute rule this no early exercise is not an absolute rule but for now i'm just giving you this rule that you should be aware that you have this uh, decision problem as she point correctly pointed out that but after buying the option you have two choices you can exercise the option early or sell the or you can sell the option in the market so i am forcibly for, for solving this problem for you by telling you that in this project right now you don't worry about early exercise you apply a rule that there is no early exercise although you are trading american options you can do early exercise this is clear but that's why i'm writing this caveat for now which means basically this is meant to tell you don't don't go and tell your interviewer that teacher said that you never exercise options early that's not true there can be situations you might do early exercise but we are not handling those complications right now so we are working with a thumb rule right now crude thumb rule that no early exercise to make our life simple okay is this clear yeah. what is the other type of option for which you can do early exercise other than american bermuda correct so european style you can't do early exercise okay only bermuda and american okay so fine so we have just recapped everything again i have taken 2 minutes extra so garvid is very angry but we can close now any 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 technical question your yeah, gulati has a technical question Yes, sir. Not a technical question. No, then if it's not a technical question, just wait. Yours is technical. Sir, actually, so then I won't close the video. Sir, I want you to know, like, uh, there you are showing the like theta price in the calculation portion. Yeah. Yeah. What's it? Yeah. So here, uh, like, the theta is point zero three minus point zero three for call option and minus point zero two for call option. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, theta for call option will always be on the lower side. The lesser than the uh, put option. No, it's not less. Actually, the magnitude is more. But sir, in a simple mathematical way, for call option. Yeah. It is seems. I mean, I have not actually addressed this problem. I, I can look at it. But essentially, it seems to me that way. That for all uh, situations, the uh, theta of the put is always more than. I'm not. You're, you're, it's good that you have actually uh, focused on this problem. And for every type of, there must be a theoretical reason. So I'll just think about that. Yeah, the put of the put theta seems to be always less than the call theta. So that's that's. It's interesting that I never looked at the call option. The call uh, theta is lesser than the put theta. No, where is it less? Sir, it less means we are talking about absolute value. Okay. Yeah. It's always more. It's three cents and it's one point seven. Yeah, yeah. You're saying what you're saying is correct. On a magnitude, on a scale basis, on a on, on the uh, number line scale, number line. But you are right. It's good that you pointed out this situation. It seems to be always more negative, more negative, okay, and absolute value is higher. It is always more negative. But there should be a logical explanation for this. I have to think through. I've never really thought about this aspect of the uh, problem. So it's good that you pointed it out. It's very good. Good means you are now attending classes more. Uh, you are more attentive. Rather than thinking of MMA, <laughs> your MMA. I am very concerned about MMA. It might be a distraction. Sir, actually, it's done for set or control and. Okay, good, 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 good. Fine. If it's that, many traders have a samurai. You heard of the samurai? You can book, read books on the samurai. Their thinking and approach to life is used by many traders. Okay. So, any other technical question? Yes. Technical question. Yeah. Sir, suppose I 
have forgotten option okay. and it's uh, ex uh, and it's expiry date is after 60 days okay. uh, and if i do not sell and if i do, do not uh, do any action with that option now okay. so does it get automatically exercised or uh, it, it vanishes okay so at the expiration date yeah so on the expiration date is a rule that most you know, exchanges will have a rule so when you are trading options on typically you will be trading options on exchanges you can also have options in otc parks as a general rule you should understand that okay we haven't had time to discuss otc versus exchange trading markets but uh, in this case you are trading options on exchanges these options that you are trading american style equity options us equity these are exchange traded options so exchanges will have a rule that options are x percent so they will you have to find out what that rule is so those options which are in the money so if you have an in the money option at expiry okay so if it is all in the money options with some kind of cutoff they might have a small cutoff they will automatically exercise the options so if you forget yeah if you forget okay they may automatically they will automatically exercise the option so this you have to find out from the exchange and the brokers will also have some rules so mainly you have to look at your broker rules and the exchange rules so you should be aware of both the rules so this is driven by automatic exercise of in the money options is driven by broker rules and exchange rules so whatever you are trading you need to uh, investigate these rules yeah so in this case you have to check the ib rules on automatic exercise and you have to check the uh, particular exchanges but ib rules will suffice because ib ib rules will override the exchange rules you can just exp explore early exercise uh, automatic exercise okay. all right okay. yes non technical so non technical uh, like you have mentioned that to buy or sell we need to check the ioi yes and so we, uh, but after uh, looking at the uh, situation of the theta then it also means that we have to look across the theta value as well that if we are going to purchase the correct amount the correct uh, option or this this means theta is also a necessary uh, necessity to find out so you don't normally i am i think what you are getting at is this part right that the theta of puts is less than the theta of calls yes. yeah so this you don't worry about so much okay this is uh, it's good that you pointed out this feature but this is not really an operative uh, factor in our decision making we are more concerned with we take a view on the eyeball we take a view on the eyeball to decide whether we want to be buying options or selling options then we take a view on the underlying asset to decide whether we want to be selling or buying calls or puts so we decide those then we decide the expiration date by looking at if i am a buyer i want to go longer dated so that my theta is less on a daily basis and then if i am a seller i want to be selling very short dated seven day options so kind of is not a necessity for on operational basis whether to buy or no, sell no, i wouldn't say theta is not a necessity theta is a necessity because you have to be aware of this relationship you have to be aware of this relationship this you have to be aware of but the fact that theta of puts is less than the theta of calls that is not a factor because we are not in the hierarchy that automatically gets eliminated as a factor in your decision making because whether to buy a put or a call or sell or call, you are deciding by some other rule the view on the decision of, uh, on the underlying asset so therefore this automatically gets eliminated but it's very good that you are focusing on it right okay good yes non technical question not non technical okay one so non technical question means i'll close this